when you're a kid, you can't choose where you grow up, if you're rich or poor, or what you get exposed to. For better or worse, it helps shape the person that you become. And this was never more true than in a place like Chicago. The city's tough, the winters are cold, and there's a realness to the city that lots of kids unfortunately have to experience. Violence, murder, poverty, it's tiring. It makes a lot of kids want to get out. But that toughness also spills over to the court. This is by far the most physical place I've ever been to. They don't call hand checks, they let you play. There's a lot of dogs in the city. I really wanted to understand the toughness and where the passion for hoops came from. Could it be the Jordan effect? Or that hoop is a ticket out for the kids? This trip wasn't all about skill and talent. It was about survival. So I came all the way from California just to find the heart of the city. In order to learn, you have to be willing to listen, hear people's story, and experience things firsthand. And that's why I linked up with Scott. He's a white dude on the south side, he's not from Chicago, and is in the music business. But he knows every basketball person in the area. Uh, his son is a player, and he also coaches youth basketball. And he's also an officer, officer in my neighborhood, Officer Edward. Wow, so you haven't seen a lot of Chicago. They just got to Chicago. Oh, OK. <laughs> well, you're in for a treat, because we're the basketball city. Chicago and basketball are intertwined. And when Scott was immersing himself into the city, he couldn't help but come across who. And along the way, he's earned the respect from many in that world. So we started exploring the city to get the inside scoop. Our first stop was a famous outdoor court where lots of sneakers commercials have been shot. Uh, one thing I thought I could do, like, I would go watch these players, like. Derek Rose and Patrick Beverly and say, how come no one's recording any of this? I, I don't know that much, but I could kind of tell you. These kids are going to do something. They're way better than the high school players I played against. And uh, and so people say, you should bring your camera. Because um, most of the uh, Chicago public league games are at like 4 in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. um, so all the best players are playing at 4 in the afternoon when lots of people are at work. Yeah. Um, but because I had a non-traditional uh, schedule, I could go see Patrick Beverly against Derrick Rose on the west side at 3 in the afternoon. And then I started bringing the little camera, a little flip camera thing, like the size of a phone. And I made little videos uh, just for fun, and uh, millions of people click on them. In Chicago, it's uh, by neighborhoods, mm -hmm. and basically north side, south side, west side. Mm -hmm. Isaiah Thomas from the west side, Anthony Davis from the south side, Derrick Rose from the south side. Uh, Doc Rivers, Shannon Brown, Evan Turner, West Side. Uh, like you keep going, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Uh, people will argue all the time who produces the best players, yeah. South Side or West Side. I'm not gonna get into that. <laughs> but ask someone who grew up here. In the West Side. <laughs> Better player? Yeah. For real? All right. Yeah. I mean, South Side's kinda, kinda tougher, but not really. No more, more skill over here? Huh? There's more skill on the yeah. west side? Yes. And there is probably more physical. Smart player too, yeah. Yeah. They fight too much. Really? Yeah. What's it like growing up over here? Chicago. Chicago is real. You know, like when they knock the project down, wow. a lot of people who like south and west and they got like real bad. Like, yeah. Like in 2000, I think 2012, we had like our murder rate was high. Didn't shut down. Oh, is this the right now? Yeah. 
It's not bad, huh? Too bad, bro. You trying to do what you're doing? You trying to get out of here? Yeah. Got like both kids in here trying to get out? Yeah. I'm trying to be like one of the one of the greats. Yeah. Chicago is like a tough, it's yeah, a tough place. Sure. Yeah. Like it's tough for an adult, but I would say with confidence, it's way more tough for a teenager. Like it's not cool to be a teenager here. This hoop like your outlet. Like you get away from all this. Stuff. I go to the I go to the court. I'm free. Oh, damn, if you want to do something bad enough, there's nothing in this world that can stop you. And that's what I see in someone like Bebe. He seemed to be a level-headed kid who wanted to do well. Just had a lot stacked up against him. And I'm sure that there were a lot of kids in Chicago just like him. I'm looking forward to keeping tabs on them. The next stop was checking out the city's young crop of talent. And I'm not talking about high school ball. I'm talking about 7th and 8th graders. This city starts their kids off young. Every day there's competitive games and packed gyms. At the game, we came across Bogan High School's head coach, Coach Goody. Bogan plays in a competitive Chicago public league with teams like Simeon and Morgan Park. He's one of the many guys in the city who's been around and has a good hand on Chicago hoops. So my philosophy is, we might not be the biggest team, but we the toughest team. Yeah. City kids are tough, you know what I'm saying? One single parent homes. The Chicago, man. Chicago, man. You As basketball has grown, so has the rise in basketball training. In most cities I go to, it seems that there's a trainer on every corner, but that's not the case in Chicago. The closest quote-unquote trainer I came across is Vince Carter, and I'm glad I did. He's really not just a pure trainer. He's coached high school ball and AAU ball, and also was a high school math teacher in Chicago. And after meeting everyone in the city so far, I had a lot of questions for Vince. And that's the beautiful thing about basketball. It's a universal language that connects people through hoop and then expands beyond the court. So we got in the lab first. Then I got schooled up on Chicago after. So you got like five seconds, you gotta know how to break the five count. You gotta know how to do all that, get into the body, and just be patient, wait for somebody to pop up. Make the pass all that, you gotta be more patient. Quick, 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 quick. quick. Yo. Yo. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, let's get to our spot. Where we wanna go, not where the defense is trying to force us to go, and we just do what we do. We set the play up, alright, that makes sense. Basically, basketball is about getting your spots, and once you get to those spots, have a counter, once you get to those spots, you gotta kick out. If one person is guarded, you should be able to always get by. And the second person step up, somebody open, that makes sense. What you're trying to create is close out situations. If you watch basketball, close out situations happen way more than ice all the time, right? Catch a shoot, catch a drive, catch a one, two dribble pull up, catch a one dribble step back, all that type of stuff happens a lot. But just be crazy. Big game like situations. That makes sense, yeah? yeah. Alright, let's, uh, let's go. Y'all two together. not like history or algebra, but I can focus on this basketball. And for a lot of kids, that the sport, not just basketball, but any sport that they play, that might be the only time that people ever say anything that they're successful at. 
So, you know, hey, you got handles, hey, you got hops, hey, you can do this, hey, you're going to be good. The English teacher's probably not saying that. <laughs> the algebra teacher's probably not saying that. You know, your, the mom at home, you know, it's probably might not be saying that. So the only encouragement sometimes they get is from that, that their athleticism. So of course they're gonna, everybody gravitates to things where people think they're doing good at, no matter what it is. What makes basketball different out here specifically, different than any other place? What makes it unique? Well, I think if you look at the economics of, of, of the two sports that are most popular amongst the traditionally lower income people, soccer and basketball, they're the cheapest sports. So basketball, you just, you know, I mean here, you see people put a crate and nail it up to the, to, to the wood on the, in the alley and just play out there. I've seen soccer players take a couple of garbage cans, that's a goal, so you don't really need a lot except for the ball, you know. I can see, you can definitely see why there are a lot of very physical and tough players here. Uh, it just goes back to what people always say, that better players come out the hill. While I don't believe that to be true, this is why people would say that, because of an area like this. And, you know, I can just tell a lot of tough players that come from this area. You can shut up. Uh, how you get shuffled? What do you get shuffled? Playing basketball. You just hoop and they just spray? Yeah. To be honest, my first day in Chicago was kind of depressing. You can't help but not feel for these kids. I needed to decompress a little and process everything. Take a little drive and get out the city. So I was glad we were planning to check out the state championship game. Marcus LeVette Jr. He's from LA, but moved to Chicago for his senior season. And he's lit the city up, leading Morgan Park to the state final four. He's always been one of my favorite high school players to watch because of his creativity and toughness. It's just special. I've known his pops for a minute now, and we've even met up in the LA episode of Heart of the City. So it was cool that everything was coming full circle. And trust me when I say this, I'm glad I caught Lil Marcus's game because this performance was special. special player. He's a special player. I know him when I see it at this point and uh, probably the best player out of that we've seen since we've been traveling around um, that I've seen in a long time. And, you know, we don't, I don't really, we don't know each other that well. We just know, you know, about each other and whatnot. But I mean, I can't help but be proud of him, you know, and I, cause I know a lot of the hard work that him and his pops put in. And, uh, you know, I met the, met the family and everything. It's just like, you can't help but be proud of him. So uh, hopefully he, he'll move on to bigger and better things now. I say this all the time, but the basketball circle is small. After the game, I randomly ran into a dude that I met last time I was in Chicago, Joel Bullard. He's the regional athletic director for basketball in Chicago. And even when you're out the city, the topic of toughness always comes up. It's kind of it's kind of from the hood. It's kind of from the hood because that's just where it is, man. It's just it's just from the dirt. 
and it brings everybody together. You talking about outside tournaments and all that stuff. You talking about you go to an outside tournament in Chicago, and you got 3,000 people there. It's the people still hooping outside, right? Yeah, in Chicago. Yeah. Sometimes it's bigger to play. In, in, in the hood in Chicago, outside, then going to play with real officials. I mean, it's just something about that, man. It's just something about that popularity of being that guy in Chicago playing ball. It's just something about it, man. I, I, it's hard to even explain. The Urban family is basketball royalty in Chicago. The dad, Mac Urban, started the famous Mac Urban Fire AU squad. His son, Nick, is the head coach of Morgan Park. The area where I be at, it's like, man, I got another thing for you besides stand, hanging out, staying on the corner, you know what I'm saying, doing all this other wrong stuff. You know, come on in the gym. Man, this this your safe haven. This will get you out. This will get you to a point where you can make your life a, a better place. Before heading out, I want to say what's up to Marcus and get his take on his time in Chicago. Why, you, why did you come out here? To, uh, to better myself and to to improve, improve on my game and, and to show myself that I'm capable of playing with uh, the city of Chicago and playing against, you know, the best top players. Yeah. California is much more slower. Uh, these guys out here, they're much more grimy. They just play hard, you know, and that's, and that's just how they play. So it's a lot of, a lot of action going on. There's a lot of, you know, the games get crazy in Chicago. Yeah. It really does. So. <laughs> The atmosphere is crazy. You know, the that fans are really into it. Like that's, Simeon, yeah. game, like that was huge. They play real hard over here. And yeah. That's the that's the cool thing about it. So you know, you're getting a lot of good basketball coming yeah. out of this city, Chicago. Chicago is Jordan country. His fingerprints are all over the city. Whether it's a statue outside of the United Center or in the feet of people walking around the streets. So on the last day, I wanted to check out the sights of it. I first met up with Stephen Bartle at the Jordan statue. He played at the University of Illinois in the NBA and overseas. He's now an announcer for the Big Ten Network. A lot of times they had to have the high school games right after school, yeah. and they can't have anybody in the really? stands. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Is that bad? Yeah. Yeah, it gets that bad. Where if they had a if they've had a game before and something happened, yeah. the next two or three games only coaches and family members. Yeah. They only let you in the gym. It's kind of like uh, Friday Night Lights in Texas for the high school football. Yeah. It's kind of like that up here in basketball. Basketball's king in Chicago. It's not even close. Today, Jordan's legacy probably lives strongest through his kicks. And the funny thing is, most kids who wear his shoes probably never even seen him play. But the kicks have created an entire economy. Hoopers and sneakerheads pay thousands of dollars for his sneakers. And it's just another example of how deeply tied Jordan, Chicago, and basketball really are. There's even a guy named Jordan Michael who owns a place called Air Gordons that sells pretty much nothing but Michael Jordan shoes. I know things go down in every city, but it really hits home when you hear the stories over and over in Chicago. It makes you appreciate what you got and really respect the kids going through these struggles because it's not their fault. They were just unfortunately born into it. But I really want to do something, plant the seeds now to maybe change the next generation. How can we duplicate this toughness without having the poverty and violence? I always say that you don't have to come from the hood to be tough, but if you do, then you might as well use everything it gives you. Toughness is a mindset to keep fighting through adversity. Because whether you're rich or poor, everyone has to deal with stuff. But those who find a way not to quit and make the most of what they have, they tend to find the most success.